Today I'd like to talk about best practices for safely using germicidal ultraviolet light to disinfect spaces or surfaces. This is a very important factor to consider if you're looking at ultraviolet disinfection. This is a fantastic tool for deactivating viruses or other pathogens. And industries like the healthcare industry and hospitals have been using this technology for many years. So it's a proven way to disinfect surfaces and areas, but it's also one that carries some very important safety considerations, and we'd like to go through some of that with you today. So the first consideration with a fixture, like what I have in front of me, this happens to be made by Osram, is that Fixtures should be installed with a few safety precautions, always by a licensed electrician. So one option for controlling a fixture like this is putting this on a uh, dedicated countdown timer circuit. This is probably the simplest way to install the fixture, um, but there are other options like a full control system, maybe a wireless control system, programmable switches. So there are many options to consider. Uh, these should be clearly marked as different from a normal light switch. That could be the use of a different color faceplate like this red faceplate. Uh, we may want to post signs that indicate very clearly that a light switch operates a germicidal ultraviolet fixture and that that fixture would be harmful to uh, skin and eyes for anyone present in the room. Another consideration is maybe mounting the, the uh, device or the switch that controls the ultraviolet fixture outside of the room. So this is a great way to be able to energize a disinfection cycle without anyone being in the room. Now, some fixtures like this Osram fixture in front of me include a 30 second countdown timer from the moment that it's energized before it actually turns on the germicidal lamp. And that's a really just gives a buffer period for someone to energize the fixture and then leave the room safely without being exposed to any ultraviolet energy. Another installation tool that may be worth considering is something called an indicator light, which I have here. This can be wired in line uh, with the switch and the fixture. So basically this would fall in between whatever controls you have turning on the fixture and the fixture itself. It's a great idea to mount this outside the room that uh, disinfection cycle is running in. And the reason that helps is you can have a very clear light of when disinfection light is operating in a room and it's very clear not to open the door. Uh, you can also pair with that a sign like this that says, warning, please do not open the door. Uh, ultraviolet light is harmful to your skin and eyes and a disinfection cycle is active or maybe while the light is illuminated, do not open the door. The last area of best practices I'd like to cover with installing ultraviolet lights is how do you determine how long they should run? This fixture does not come with run cycle controls. You have to install that separately. Other fixtures may include switches to indicate a 30, 60, 90, 120 minute run cycle. So what I have here is something called a dosimeter. Now a dosimeter measures the amount of disinfection power that is received on a surface uh, in the form of ultraviolet energy. These typically respond to 254 nanometer wavelength. It's a lot of science, but basically that's the wavelength that deactivates pathogens like viruses and bacteria we can place these cards around an area that you'd like to disinfect. And the center circle of the card changes color based on how much energy, disinfection energy, the surface has received. And you can see we have a couple of indicators here, uh, orange and pink, depending on how much of a dose is received. So one way to determine the run cycle for something like this fixture in front of us is to install it in a room with the ability to select different run cycle times through a control system or countdown timer. And then at commissioning, we can place multiple dosimeter cards around a room. Now, the ability for ultraviolet light to deactivate pathogens is really a function of three things. There's distance from the light source, there's the intensity of the light source, and there's also the amount of time that the uh, object is exposed to the ultraviolet energy. All three of these play together, so you could have a shorter run cycle by installing more fixtures that get the ultraviolet light source closer to more surfaces that would also give you more intensity, or maybe you can use fewer fixtures, but you're able to do a longer run cycle or a longer disinfection cycle. 
So in the example of this fixture, we might install half a dozen of these uh, ultraviolet uh, measurement cards around a room and run a couple of different cycles on our fixture to determine what is the minimum dose or the minimum amount of disinfection that we need at the furthest card away from this fixture. Another consideration is that these fixtures or ultraviolet disinfection rather follows a line of sight rule. So basically, if something is in the shadow of this light, maybe there's a chair blocking an area and a card is underneath a chair or some other piece of furniture, that shadow cast will actually block much of the disinfection power of the ultraviolet light. We hope that your installation of ultraviolet lights uh, is a great tool in ensuring that your space is safe also uh, we hope that this is helpful in following some safety guidelines and best practices. And remember, always consult with the manufacturer's installation and safety guidelines associated with these fixtures. They're a wonderful tool, and they're also something that we should respect and be very careful with as we're installing and using the disinfection power.